Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da Habitifillah, a question was asked Assalamu alaikum I just came across your videos today and I sense that you are a sensible, knowledgeable man inshallah I just turned 19 today and I'm honestly really lost in the deen I don't know where, what to study, where to study or who to study from I don't know who to trust and it's very overwhelming I want to learn the basics of the deen but have no idea where to start Imagine me as someone who just became Muslim, keeping this in mind, are there any particular sheikhs or people I can learn from that you would recommend where I live? I don't have much access to that. And if I could find anything online, that would be a massive help. May Allah bless you. Jazakallah khairan. Uh, first, I want to say, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless your uh, quest for knowledge uh, and uh, knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's Deen and of how to worship Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. So first and foremost as far as your priorities It's very important to uh, f Focus first and foremost on Tawheed on Knowing who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is and how to worship him knowing that the purpose of creation is To worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. This is the divine intent of why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al -kareem, I've not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. So letting us know that that's the divine purpose. That's, that's what it's all about. It's about being sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when all the fitna dies and all the people who called you to this path and that path and this way and that way and confused you, when they die or when they become of age, you will be left alone and when you die you'll be left with your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and be called to account. So this is why I first and foremost say stay away from dawah to fitna. Dawah to fitna. Meaning dawah, the dawah that only brings you confusion. If you find individuals that only talk about governments and making takfir of people and what's the ruling on this one and that one and this leader's a murtid and this one's this and this person is this then without doubt do not listen to one lecture of this person regardless of who it is uh, secondly then there are those who focus just on uh, they claim to focus on matters of the the heart but yet they don't follow Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam with regards to that so meaning there are many people of tasawwuf of very Sufi uh, orient, oriented sects and to name some of them like Hamza Yusuf and others don't listen to any of their lectures neither I don't care what benefit you may gain but the harm of increasing your love for people who call away from the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, into new modern ideologies is more harmful to you than uh, the benefit you may gain so uh, and then there are so many others and so many other groups and this is not the place nor time to talk about it. But another thing I want to mention, there are those people who wear the cloak of Ahl Sunnah. They wear the dress of Ahl Sunnah. They sound like they're speaking from Ahl Sunnah, but you see that they have the worst of manners and the worst of character. And you see that on top of that, that all they do is speak about other individuals. And we're not talking about the people of innovation, but they speak and they write and they they post videos and they cut and paste lengthy rebuttals against people who share really the same methodology as them. But perhaps they have some differences. So it's very important. This Tao will confuse you. I can never stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and recommend someone to listen to some of those individuals, even if some of them I respect their knowledge. But what I see, the destruction that they bring with the good, it can be devastating. And it can be devastatingly confusing for a new Muslim. There's just no way I can do that because I'm going to be asked for Allah. It doesn't matter who says Mumayya. It doesn't matter who says Tami. It doesn't matter what cut and paste. It, it, it just doesn't matter because I have to stand before Allah with whatever I tell you. So I'm trying to tell you with sincerity to the best of my ability. As far as uh, particular individuals, so again, Tawheed, learning a creed is your first and foremost, learning how to properly pray, make wudu, um, fasting Ramadan, stick with those basics and get strong with those basics. You don't need to involve yourself with talking about individuals. That's not a requirement for everyone in the religion. That doesn't mean it's not from the religion. 
but it's not a requirement for everyone. That's for those who specialize, those who have knowledge to be able to look into those matters, and that's for your students of knowledge. It's not for the average person should not be making videos about Muhammad Munir and uh, this one and that one and talking about this one and that one. That's not their job. Their job is to learn the basics of Islam. And so this is what I say, is those people who are calling you and teaching you the basics of Islam, those people you stick with. As far as names, I'm gonna drop a few names. They may be controversial to some, I can only speak from my little limited experience because I haven't been in the English speaking world. So there's a lot of individuals I really, I didn't listen to anybody. There's no one that I can say that I listened to probably more than two or three lectures, maybe five lectures at the most, and I'm talking over 20 years. I don't know what's going on in the English speaking world because I have focused my energy on trying to learn some Arabic and learn from scholars. That's just where my focus was. But now I'm seeing the importance of learning what's going on around me because I'm going to go back into my country, America. So let me just uh, focus this t topic a bit. So what I would say, as I've said many times before, I like the work that I see Sheikh Tahir, uh, Sheikh Tahir uh, uh, White doing. He's doing a fantastic job at teaching the people the principles in a soul of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'a in a very beautiful, broken down, concise way. I see what he's doing in the community. Also the Imam of the community. I know him, uh, Hanif. He, uh, you know, and again, I haven't really listened that much, but I know him as an individual, a man of, uh, that should be respected. And also he was a studious uh, Talib al-Ilm. So those individuals, likewise, the Muslim Family Center, the brothers like Ali Davis, the brother uh, Abu Sajid, uh, and I've recommended Muhammad Munir on many occasions that you can gain benefit from all those brothers. I feel comfortable with recommending those individuals. And they're all <laughs> like, uh, I can't even relate the amount of co me compared to them. I, it's not a, really my position to be recommending them because they have much more knowledge and much more understanding of the religion than I do. But since I was asked, I'm sharing. Um, another important point, I want to share a hadith with you. The hadith of the Prophet وسلم, he said, Adam All the children of Adam commit sins. And the best of those who sin are those who repent. The reason I'm mentioning this hadith is because you have to realize that no one is infallible. Even if we recommend someone, that doesn't mean we agree with everything 100%. That's impossible that you're going to say everyone, uh, no one, you know, how many ulama that we study with that we love, but we don't agree with them in certain issues, certain messiah, you know, certain issues or certain positions they took or a mistake that became known and that was clear or whatever the case may be. So that's not the recommendation, but I feel comfortable with recommending those individuals, those uh, students of knowledge, because they are calling to the book and the sunnah and they seem to be people of good conduct and character and people who are realize the importance of giving the tarbiyah because that's how you, you need to raise yourself. You need to raise yourself with good manners. The Prophet ﷺ said, That there isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of the believer than good manners. And verily, Allah hates wicked and sinful speech. Now, there is tons of other people in America that I can recommend, that I have respect for. Uh, uh, the Imam uh, Rashid uh, barber that I know him from Yemen. I have known him for, for years and and I respect a little bit that I've listened to him. Also Sheikh um, Abdurrahman Omeysan and, and and many many others and, and our brother um, our brother um, from LA. I can't think of his name right now. And then there's Sheikh Farid from LA. And there's many, but you know, so, so those are some of the lectures that you'll find out there. But what I will say is don't busy yourself with people uh, with refutations, the bottom line is, especially as a new Muslim and stuff. That's not the knowledge that you need. You may listen to know who to stay away from in general, but don't involve yourself in that. 
Focus on what's going to bring your heart closer to Allah. What's going to bring you and strengthen your relationship with you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, there's many from the UK also I recommend. Some controversial, but I would just say some that will busy you with good, the little bit I've listened to, and because I know them personally from Medina and I respect them, like Abduwahid Stevenson. Uh, and he's in, I believe, Croydon or something. I think he has a Marcus there. Also, I've listened to some clips from our brother Abu Taymiyyah and had the honor of meeting him in Medina. And I respect this young man tremendously. And he has much more knowledge than many of us. And he, in the life, Allah blesses him with a khlas, with the bat, not the saying that he doesn't have that, but to say that he continues on the sunnah, then he will be a powerhouse, bi'idnillah ta'ala, in the future to really, you know, they just need age, some of these youngsters, but they have, they have the power punch uh, of knowledge and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored them. And I would definitely recommend speaking, you know, looking, listening to his lectures because they seem immensely beneficial, the little bit I've listened to. And you can ask questions to those guys to get further information. And there's many others. There's many others I respect. I respect the imam there in Brixton because uh, I've seen some of his written works. Uh, I think Abdurrahim uh, uh, Ashanti is his last name. And, uh, you know, many of the other brothers because they're giving you the tarbiyah. You need tarbiyah. You need to know how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how to have the good manners and how to have the good akhlaq. And these things are going to form the, the foundation of your religion. These things are going to strengthen your heart. But if you're only busying yourself, even if someone has knowledge, but all they're doing is refutation after refutation, doing things that destroy your heart and destroy the honor of others, I don't see where the success is. I just, I haven't seen it. And I've watched many ulama over the years and seen that those, the most successful of them were the ones who raised us up. And those are those major scholars. And then those scholars, those mountains of scholars, mountains of knowledge, like Imam bin Baz, Imam al-Albani, uh, Imam Muqbil, uh, and Imam bin Uthaymeen, those books, those are the books you wanna get. Those translated works, I say get all of them. Anything you can find translated and it's, and it's downloadable, just do a lot of reading and read their fatawa. And you don't go wrong there. And Imam Fozan, who's still living, and Imam Abdul Masan al Abad, well, Kathir, well, Kathir, and there's many, but I'm just mentioning some of those major ones that can give you immense benefit and their works are translated in English. So I would say read those things, read their, their works, and don't be discouraged about what all the people cut and paste and the trolls and they speak and they distract you because they will give you a religion of confusion that you will actually probably leave Islam. I know people have left Islam because of the fitna that people like this bring. We know of marriages and households that have been destroyed because of people being uh, a people of fitna. They don't bring you good. They're not giving you something that you can hold on to and, and bring you closer to Allah, but instead they're bringing you things that uh, destroys your iman and confuses you because one day their scholar is like this they love him and they're calling him alam i know a brother i respect him he's a mashallah a strong student of knowledge strong student of knowledge from the uk i won't mention too many other sifat of his but I, and i still respect him tremendously and he's with certain dao organizations there in the uk and you know as, and, I, and, I, and I just see how they flip on their own scholars like that. Instead of saying the Mashayikh have a difference or this one has a mistake, I don't agree, but they have to take, the, you know, this Hizbiya, it, 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 it consumes people. And people don't understand, they don't see that it's Hizbiya, that they are making al wala wal bara on Sheikh so and so statement. And because these two Mashayikh, you know, they make it, if you don't take a position, you're the, you're, you're the, uh, you know, you're, you're the waqifun, you, you, you don't, you're the people who, you're more dangerous than the one who took a side. Come on. Like, like these issues are, are even near the importance of the, the Jehemiah talking about the Quran being re, uh, created. No way. There's no way you can make this. So you see that there's a skewed understanding and there is a danger. Hezbiya is something I warn you to run from. Anyone who's making al wala wal bara. If you heard me saying Tahir, you must take from him. And those who love Tahir are, and those who don't love Tahir are this, then you know that's a dangerous statement and you better watch what I'm saying. But you don't hear those statements. I just recommend who I think and who I think you can gain benefit from. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And may Allah protect us from kufr, shirk, wa nifaq, wa hizbiyah. 
وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد